Hi guys, welcome back to the Graveyard Workshop. I have a different kind of project for you today. It is an Arduino-based, motion-activated noisemaker that I call the Cemetery Howler. It uses an Arduino card, the Arduino software environment to program the card, and a Arduino MP3 shield, along with a micro SD card and a parallax passive infrared sensor. I'm going to walk through the components and I'll try to provide for you the source code that I wrote for this application. I think it's kind of unique. Okay, the core of the package is the Arduino or Arduino. Never quite sure how to pronounce it. This is a uh, programming environment. These things are great for hauntings, um, for home haunts. It's basically a programmable card has many input options. You can set it up to manage relays or lights or other devices. Works very well. I have about four of them that I use for different things and I'll try to provide you with a couple of other ideas as well. It has a USB connection and it is powered by a 9 volt power supply. So you can actually just plug a uh, 9 volt battery on an adapter into this jack if you wanted to. If you have worked with Arduinos, uh, terrific. Uh, you, you are already on your way. If you haven't, uh, you need to do a little bit of homework. The operating environment is free. This is open source software. The devices, this card itself cost, I don't know, like 25 bucks. But it's um, something you can use for a lot of different home haunt applications. The other thing it uses is an MP3 player shield by SparkFun. Uh, SparkFun has a lot of robotics components. Uh, they have the servo controllers that I use for skeletons. And this particular device, it comes, um, the only thing you have to do to this when you get it is solder in the these uh, pins. So there is a little bit of soldering involved, but otherwise it's a turnkey. I went out to iTunes, purchased about a hundred Halloween sound effects. The sound effects, um, you know, I downloaded the sound effects, edited them slightly so that they were a few seconds long, loaded them onto this micro SD card, and the micro SD card just plugs right into the spark fun the spark fun mp3 player shield these two devices just attach together like this and then the third component probably the most important component is the parallax passive infrared sensor uh, i paid about ten dollars for this one at Radio Shack. However, um, I also have bought bundles of them for about $11 from China. Um, the Parallax ones are uh, well supported and uh, very reliable. So, if this is the first time you've screwed around with any of this stuff, um, you might want to just head over to Radio Shack and buy one of these. So, it's all pretty straightforward. The couple of simple connections to make. Um, make sure I get my wires right. The parallax uh, infrared sensor has a ground, a positive, and an output. So you just cross connect them to the Arduino. I use uh, 5 volts on this and I'll explain why in a moment. And the output over here is pin 5. Okay. So that's the hardware part. A couple little things. These wires that I'm using, I bought in a bundle. Came from China. Female on one end, male on the other. If you work with the Arduino, uh, you'll appreciate the uh, male end on these connections. And the female on the other end. 9-volt um, power supply, 
and we need a set of speakers. I use a computer set of speakers with a like a separate little teeny subwoofer. I think I paid like twenty dollars for this from uh, Newegg Software. I'm gonna plug that in here. I'm gonna plug in the power supply. Set it all down. Wait for it to warm up. There are about 50 recordings on that card and it will choose them randomly. It waits about five seconds between playing anything. So in other words, there's like a reset time. So if you set up the sensor in front of your cemetery and somebody walks by, it goes off, they stop, they listen, it doesn't go off again uh, until they start moving again or, or after five or ten seconds. There are a couple of pretty nice versions of uh, sound effects that you can get on iTunes. I edited them down to about five to eight seconds, and you also have to name them in a specific way in order for the Arduino libraries to recognize them. So you number them track 000 through track whatever the last number is of files that you have, and then you set the randomizer within the software so that it knows how many files that you have and it will play them randomly. Uh, some of them are short and abrupt, some of them are a little longer but more subtle. Let's see what I can get. See that one it didn't go off because uh, the timer hadn't reset yet. So uh, it works pretty well. Now what you're looking at is the most basic setup. You'll need to waterproof it and you need to extend the sensor a, a little bit probably and I'll show you how to do all of that uh, <laughs> right now really freaks the kids out on the way to the bus or the way back from the bus and I'm sure it really annoys my dog walking neighbors Okay, so, the way to uh, kind of outdoor proof this thing is pretty simple. I uh, put the whole unit, this is an Arduino case, um, they're about five bucks, they're available online, and the, that's actually the top, the Arduino and the shield. fit nicely into, the, into this case. I've cut the pins down a little bit so that it's easier to get in and out. So there's the case. I ended up drilling a couple of holes in the ends of the top. Now what I've used is four conductor home alarm wiring that I got at Home Depot. About 25 feet of it. I'm going to wire this back up. Close it all up, put the cover back on it. All right. Then uh, you just plug the power supply into it on one end, plug the sensor in on the other end. Now, when you go to put this sensor out, if you're not going to protect the sensor uh, by putting it in a box, what I ended up doing is just covering the back of it with black um, electrical tape and it actually uh, has been pretty weatherproof for about a month. I've turned it off when it's been raining heavily but for the most part it's held pretty well. So once I get all of this wired up then I take the box, I take the speakers, I take the power supply, put everything in a black trash bag, take a zip tie so that only the sensor cable and the power cable are coming out of the trash bag and zip it 
tight and put it in the bushes in the back of my cemetery. Run the uh, bell wire out to the front somewhere where the sensor will catch people coming by and uh, let it do its thing. Uh, the, the sensor does light up however you can take this Fresnel lens off and cover up the LEDs that light up inside it so that it's not as obvious that it's going off. Most people have never noticed it though um, and it is a good test to make sure that it's working. So I'm going to go put it back outside and I'll show you how it all comes together.